Welcome to We Ride Motos. In this video, I'm going to do my wife's Ducati 2015 Urban Enduro. I'm going to adjust the valves, uh, and it has a Desmodronic valve system on it. So one lifter to open the valve, one lifter to close the valve. So two shims per valve. So it's going to be interesting. And if you like what I'm doing on this channel, and uh, you know, a low cost option or a no cost option would be a like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. Throw us a comment once in a while, for better or for worse, and. Uh, yeah, it really it helps the channel grow, and, and uh, maybe one day uh, I'll become a YouTube sensation. But between now and then, you're going to be stuck with my ugly mug and my shitty videos. So anyway, uh, enjoy it, and uh, watch to the end, because I do have a bit of a wrap-up on what I discovered through the process. Just get what is that? 0.04 mil through on the end. And Please uh, excuse the fact that I keep changing up between reading my feeler gauges in thousandths of an inch and millimeters. So when you hear me say four, that's thou, and when you hear me say 0.1, that's millimeters. But just has them both written on each field of gauge and I keep messing it up, so sorry about that. I'm just going to put a little piece of paper in that hole for the oil, because I don't feel like fishing shit out of the motor. I gotta pop this. Holder off. Okay, there's the valve holder. I just gotta find that sweet spot, I guess. There we go. Okay. So now, there's the in shim. Now comes the dodgy part. I gotta go further. What I'm doing is rolling the engine ahead enough that I can push that valve in. Okay, so got the 3 8, three eight extension is the perfect size. Okay. Now I gotta get these little freaking collets off of here, which is tough. So let's try. One guy does it with a magnet. Oh, oh, there they are. Except they didn't really want them to come off like that. Anyway, they're off. Now, let's get this shim out. the shim and this shim is 
a 2.90 if I'm allowed to be 0.1 to 0.15 and I'm point nothing I gotta go at least well, if I go 0.1 so if I go 2.8 there's an 8.5 There's a 2.8 right there. Okay. $33 from Ducati. So that is a, a, a 2.80. 2.80, here she goes. she be okay now these if I hadn't cut them both out has wear marks on it so you got to get them in I don't see any wear maybe that's the bottom maybe let's go to that let's see how many times I gotta do this before I so I'm going to put a little tiny dab of grease on it, just to hold it. Okay, that's got some grease so it sticks to my finger. Let's put that down. Now that is one tiny little piece of shit. One. Now the guy says you just put that in and you roll it around. Now let's put it on the top. Okay, now we'll try to put the other one. A little more grease. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's the collets in <coughs> and the shim in. That's not tiny at all. Okay, let's put this back on. Let's push that in, pull that out. Okay. Okay, let's see what we got for measurements now. So we should be four. We get four in there now. No, that's too tight. And I need to be. I need to be, I have to get this, I have to drop a half, so I need to take and change this one too. There we go. So I need to, this one is a 2.85. Okay. Well, I'm going to drop a point. Five. Here's an opener for 2.8. Let's let's put a 2.8 in there. Give us a little more room. Okay. So now we should be Go bigger. There we go. 
Two point eight. Let's go at two point seven five, and that better be it, because that's what I bought. Oh my God. Zero four is good. Let's see if we can get a point zero five. Nope. Okay, so now if that's big enough, then I should get Zero five. The opening spec is point one to point one five, which would be six thousand. So if we can't get, so we're right on the tight end of that. All right. Yeah. So. So point one, let's see, let's try point one three. No, so we're gonna call it point one. Yeah. I can spin that, I can spin that. Let's just make sure this goes around and around a couple of times, yep. Okay, now we we'll make sure the thrust washers, that we put one on each side. Yeah, there's one. Okay, I'll put the clip. Oop, drop it. Put the clip back in. Okay, clip is clipped. Okay, so let's pick out this piece of cloth that I have in here. I just had this stuffed in the oil drain. I don't need that. Okay, now let's just run that around a bunch of times. Feel nothing. Okay, so now we want to have this. Five doesn't fit. No. Four. That's four. Four fits. So that is point one mil. And then point one three does not, and I need to be between point one and point one five, so I'm perfect. Now, if I want to have the other one is point oh five, so if I'm point one, and that means point one five would be the biggest. That's tight. And then we'll go, this is point one three. Point one three. Perfect. Okay, so we are point one. Zero three, and that is front. Okay, so let's double check. We got all the right shit in here. We got the retaining clip on. Got the goop out. 
that's in. That turns. I don't feel any binding of any kind. Good. So that is a two. Okay, now on the top. Good. Containing clip in. Let's let's just double check this top while we're at. So this so we got. Seven fits. Four. Four fits, but five does not. Okay, so that is. And then that is. Open. Okay. I am happy with that. So I'm just gonna. Clean this up. Okay. Well, I'm not going to film putting these on other than a little. Grease on the O-ring. Okay, nothing's in there. All works good. Okay, I'm not gonna film that, so we'll just button her up. What I gotta do is I've gotta get all these. So there's my factory mark and my factory mark. Oh, 
Okay, so got that mark lined up, that mark lined up, that one, and that one, and that one. So that should mean we are. I'm just going to put a little bit of tension on that. Six mil. Okay, now we want to make sure that we don't bind. So. Okay, perfect, everything's back. So now, now we have to adjust these to a frequency, believe it or not. So I have an app called Spectroid. And what I do, I'm going to pluck this like a guitar. This is awkward. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. That reads a hundred and five. That's 77. So I, what I want, the catalog says 145, but the mechanics say that's too tight. So online it says 99 to 100 to 110. So I'm gonna so the vertical cylinder is at 105 to 107. So I want to get this one roughly the same. So that is a six millimeter. What the hell is my six millimeter? come when you set things down there they go okay so and this is so almost incomprehensible when you do it now I'm at 160 way too tight that's the thing it's so little 125. That's probably going to be way loose. Yeah, 81. It's almost like you can't even. There. Ninety-seven, ninety-three. So that's still a little, still a little loose. Anyway, it's trial and error, basically. Hmm. One hundred and forty. Sixty-seven. You gotta wonder how they came up with this plan. Hundred thirty. Ninety-five. 
You know what? I'm going to call 110 close enough. So these have to be tightened to 20 foot pounds. And zero. 15. 20. Let's check that frequency one last time. One ten. One oh five. Not going to get it any closer than that. Okay. I'm going to put this all back together, so I don't think I need to film bolting all this back together, so. Okay, she's all back together. Let's see how she sounds. back together call her a day okay so this will be a wrap up kind of a talk of what I learned when I did the Ducati so it's a 2015 urban enduro it's a v-twin two valves per cylinder so as much as I poo pooed the Ducati to my wife you know it ended up being a very easy bike to work on uh, Getting the to the valves, you know, you got to take battery out and part of the air box out, and then you can get to the back two cylinders, which was, wasn't terrible. Getting the tank off is by far the the biggest pain in the ass, and I did manage to break one of the quick release tabs that are on there. Um, so I did the the little tire wrap hack they call it to to resecure it. And what I found though is you have to make sure they use a narrow tie wrap so that it can get in a little groove to pull the teeth in, hold it. If you're in that far, you'll know what I mean. Uh, it's, it is a good system. Um, the best thing you can use that I found was before you wreck it, Go get yourself, these are fuel, just a cheap plastic fuel line, air conditioning line relief, and a little gray one fit. I had to trim part of it off. But you can get your hand in there and you slip this over and then you just push this little thing up into that quick release and it just drops right out. But by the time I figured this out, I'd already broke it. So lesson learned. So maybe you can not do that. Um, as it was, uh, and also discovered that the easiest way to set the valves is to, uh, you have to take the belts off. So I was retuning the belts anyway. So there's lots of videos online, but basically you, you set your valve up and you make sure your crank is at the, the, the mark, the factory mark on the pulleys at the factory mark on the, on the side of the engine. And then I just use a, a white paint pen and mark all your belts in a couple spots so that it's very obvious loosen them, take them off. Uh, and I just took the front valve off. By the time I'd, I'd already done the rear valves, put it in sixth gear and bump, bump, bump to, to get the, you know, the engine to roll around and check things. But when I did the front one, uh, the exhaust valve was tight, which is everything I read says one of the three is going to be, or four, sorry, is going to be tight. In this case, yeah, it was, it was really tight. So, just to make it easier, uh, I took the belt off, marked it off, took it off, and then I could just roll the cam. And I tell you, to get the valves off to change the shims, pop off the little keeper. You play with the, the, the cog a little, and then the valve will just, or the lifter will just slop to the side, and off comes the, the 
the opening shim, and then it's a little more work to get to the closing shim. Now, this video is online, so I'm not going to a few pictures of it, or maybe the video turned out. But honestly, I think it's going to be the easiest one there is to work on. So yeah, I poo-pooed the desmodronic valves, but they uh, they turned out to be pretty easy, generally, to, to work on. Now, a couple things that I did learn. Um, change the opening shim first. It's the easiest, right? You just pop the keeper off, slide the lifter over, change it. Our Ducati dealer here locally, uh, I went in and I bought, I think, two or three openers and two or three lift uh, closer shims, hoping that I could just return the ones that, um, that I didn't use. And they're also a Yamaha dealer. And he said, yeah, because Yamaha, they could, but they don't return the Ducati stuff. So, and it's Ducati price. So by the time I had bought these five shims, two sets of collets, I was 190 bucks in, so anyway, I got a bag of spare parts. But as it turned out, I was able to get all four valves in the spec, um, and the only thing I ended up having to change was the opener on the horizontal cylinder on the exhaust side. I, I moved that, and and yeah, so the Desmodronic, at least in the V twin that I'm working on. I didn't mind it at all. It, it it was easy. I mean, I got the the little CB 500X. Uh, it doesn't need valves yet, but uh, it's going to get some suspension work and stuff. So it's in here getting an oil change right now. And the big GS has got to get valves done, and I got to buy another eight hundred dollar tool to do the shift cam on that. So uh, we'll see what it's. Hopefully, it's easy. But yeah, um, I actually didn't mind it, and the, you know, and the, the Ducati was really hard starting when you crank it over it would sound like the battery was really weak and it was a brand new battery while well, we got rid of one battery bought a brand new one and it didn't make any difference and then once I adjusted that valve it just fires right over so maybe that was the, the sign that she was a little tight but not an unusual exhaust valves get tight and opening intake valves don't or get loose all the intakes were good three two of the or three of the exhaust or the closers were good and there's the one Exhaust closer was tight or well once I adjusted the opening the closer was in spec and the spec on the closers is like 0 to 0 0.05 millimeters, which is basically a thou like it's it's next to nothing It's 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 tiny so Next time if I do it just adjust the opener. It's easy. It's just pop pop You can set it check it and then you might not even have to dick around with the collets and all that stuff, but uh um, yeah, so the Ducati got an oil change, uh, fresh oil, flushed out all the uh, brake lines. It's going to get some new bar end hand guards so, and some foldable levers. Um, Carrie fell over on it and bent the clutch one pretty bad, so it's hanging on for dear life. So we're going to get her something that hopefully that won't happen again. And uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, it was good. It was a good, good learning experience. So. One additional thing that I should mention, uh, when I'm taking the, when I took the gas tank off, getting the electrical connection undone was a little tight. So what I usually do is on those things, I'll put just a little tiny bit of grease or something on the, on the rubber seal. And then when you push it back in, it, it goes in and out a lot easier. Now, unfortunately it has five little, very small prongs that got to line up with five very small holes on the two connectors, an automotive style connector. And I had inadvertently bent one of those little prongs. Now, luckily, I was able to get in there with some needle nose pliers and straighten it out without breaking it off. Had I broke it off, I would have been in, well, I would have said some words because the perfect fix is a whole new pump assembly, which is not cheap, or rip it all apart and do some kind of hack job, which I probably would have opted for. But I was able to fix it, uh, got it straightened out, and got that plug back on there. So just be super careful when you're you know, it's got to fit in just so, but I would visually look and make sure all those little five little prongs are nicely lined up and tweak them if you need to. But, uh, you know, mine just got totally bent. The bike wouldn't start. It would crank over, but it wouldn't. There was no fuel. And, and uh, so it caused, it caused me about a two-hour delay to finally figure that out. And then, of course, got it running. And it's all good now, but just be aware.